Now we'll, we'll have a look at a closer look at this Coxford Balanza Clover um, sub clover pasture. We've got the, the plantain as well and a little bit of white. Our expectation is that the white clover won't last more than about a couple of years and it'll be interesting to see how much white is actually in the herbage on offer when we've got the ewes and lambs in here from August, September, October into November of this, this coming spring. Um, the notice that the, a lot of farmers would be uh, horrified at the, the lack of grass here but if we have more grass it will very quickly dominate the legume and the herbage will be of pretty low nutritive value come spring and you've got to give space for the legume to express itself and maybe at the moment we're, we're, we've got slightly less dry matter yield than we, we might otherwise have because of the lower population of grass after just two kilos per hectare of the coxfoot but it's um, the whole aim is to get absolutely top quality pasture for the lactating ewe in spring and that's the money making time if you don't if you can't get high performance from your lambs while they're on the mother in spring you're you're really not going to score a, a profit it's that's what all the, all a lot of your pasture management has to aim at so maybe we're a bit over the top here but if we come in close you can see how stony the this uh, soil is there's a lot of stone still visible um, two years after drilling. Now the, if we look more closely at the, um, we've got a, a wee quadrate here, it's, it's a hundredth of a metre square, ten centimetre, um, ten centimetre by ten centimetre, if we put it down there, is, is that okay? Um, we can see that we've got stones, we've got a, a small probably what a, a reseeded uh, plantain there and and the sub clover leaves are quite small so far that those seedlings um, are the, the leaves are, are very small and then there's even smaller leaves there and those are balanza there's a there's a balanza seedling just there and the uh, Perhaps we could talk about the, the grazings that we've had. Well, this has been great because of the vigour of the coxfoot, it was getting up and all the mineralised nitrogen after rain, the coxfoot was quite tall, it was starting to shade the, clo the germinating clovers and so we, we grazed, um, we've grazed twice since it rained, uh, since we got the autumn germinating rains, just to keep the, the coxfoot in check. We probably didn't have to graze the ryegrass treatments, but we did, and maybe we should have let, let the ryegrass get stronger to, to go, grow through the winter. Um, just a wee bit more on the, if we come over here, just focus in here, um, you can see a lot more balanza clover seedlings here. There's one with the typical Bolter balanza brown marks on the leaf. About 10% of the balanza plants have that leaf mark. The, we've got a problem trying to identify the, the Rosabrook subclover from the Denmark. In general, Denmark has virtually no distinct leaf mark and it's not a very hairy plant whereas the um, Rosabrook has a strong, a, a very strong uh, leaf mark but it doesn't seem to have developed that leaf mark yet and so to be sure of what we've got we've got to wait till these plants develop bigger leaves. There, this area this rep 4 what used to be in Lucerne for some years and it had been through winter feed and there is a little bit of contamination of the um, of the Mount Barker. Now there's a Mount Barker leaf very hairy and it's got the typical autumn winter uh, brown flecks 
Mount Barker loses those brown flecks in spring. So the time to judge how much Mount Barker you've got is um, most easily done, say, at the end of winter, when those brown flecked, very hairy plants are very obvious. Of course, Mount Barker is a cultivar that's more than 100 years old, still in use, and it still um, persists on a lot of New Zealand uh, grazing land on, on the hills because it was the one that was chucked out of the tiger moth after the, uh, the Second World War.